I would like to also greet everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Sikke, and I work in the laboratory of Shaba Pal in the Biological Research Center of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. And our research field is genome engineering and its application to study antibiotic resistance. In this presentation, I would like to introduce you into a war situation, a war between people and bacteria, and our trials and intentions to uh, win this war using genome engineering in the laboratory. So let's start. First, what are antibiotics? These are small molecules, like penicillin, you can see here, uh, produced by fungi or bacterial cells. Um, and the function is that uh, using these molecules, uh, we can control pathogenic uh, bacterial infections or, uh, or we can kill bacteria or we can pro um, inhibit uh, its growth. Also, fungi or other bacteria uses these uh, antibiotics to uh, handle with other bacteria. Uh, so they have a war between bacteria, fungi between bacteria, and also we have, uh, which is the most important in our perspective, the war between bacteria and people. So how does antibiotics work? How, how our weapons uh, can be uh, kill bacteria? They inhibit uh, vital functions of bacteria, like uh, metabolic enzymes or cell wall synthesis or DNA synthesis. So while interacting with these uh, trajectories, uh, they can control bacteria, they can kill them or inhibit the growth depending on the type of, uh, of antibiotic. Uh, but bacteria are really, really clever uh, creatures. They want to survive and they develop weapons to, uh, to kill other ones. So they developed antibiotic resistance. Uh, there are some mechanisms in this figure. Uh, they can pump out antibiotic from the inside of the cell. So if our antibiotic uh, went in the cell, the bacteria can just pump in, and then no uh, danger can be seen um, for, for the cells. They can modify the membrane of the bacterial cells. Uh, it is called membrane impermeability, so the antibiotic cannot go in to the cell. Uh, they also can uh, develop new enzymes, acquire new mutations, and this way modify or inactivate the antibiotics. All of these mechanisms are encoded by several mutations in the bacterial genome or in mobile genetic elements called plasmids, which are small circular DNA elements. Uh, now we face a really, really uh, severe and huge problem in the clinics and in the uh, healthcare of the 21st century. Year by year, 700,000 death are caused by resistant pathogens. And uh, the numbers are increasing, and in the developing countries in Africa or in India, the um, antibiotic resistant pathogens are among the most uh, uh, relevant death-causing agents. So we have this problem, uh, but uh, antibiotic development has slowed down, uh, contrary to this fact. Uh, you can see in this timeline that in the middle a decades of the 20th century, many new antibiotics were and antibiotic families were uh, developed, and then just nothing. Um, to understand this, uh, we have to, uh, or we can look at this figure. Antibiotic development is really slow and extremely expensive. It needs more than 10 years to develop a new antibiotic and hundreds of millions of dollars. So. Uh, and if resistance uh, occurs, then uh, this antibiotic cannot be used longer, and it is a really, really uh, huge waste of money for the developer companies. So develop an antibiotic for a company, it is a really risky uh, project. So this is why they don't really like them, because the resistance happens really frequently in the first years of clinical use. Then no profit, no antibiotic, no money, and this is how the world works, sadly. Um, as a conclusion, we can say that we need resistance-free antibiotics. But how to find them? We have a lot of molecules, and we don't have that much time. But finding these uh, resistance-free antibiotics, we could control uh, pathogens in a longer time. And also, uh, the pharmaceutical companies would have more motivation to develop them because they can expect the profit without the appearance of resistance. The answer is test evolution of antibiotic resistance in the laboratory, and this is what we do uh, in the Biological Research Center. So let's see how it is work. First, you can see here 
uh, that evolution happens among bacteria too, not just the man were, uh, create, were developed with uh, evolution or our extremities from the fish or whatever, but bacteria has also uh, evolutionary processes. Uh, here you can see an initial diverse bacteria population. They, were, they are the ancestors of one uh, common bacterial ancestor, and, uh, and they acquired mutations. They developed diversity in the population. So there you can see the yellow low resistance level bacteria, then red more resistant ones, so diverse population. Then antibiotic selection came, and just the two most resistant bacteria could survive. And after multiplication, they formed the final bacterial population, and we can see that just resistant bacteria can be uh, uh, detected. So this is how evolution works. It is quite slow, so it needs months or years, but we don't have that much time in the lab and during the uh, development of an antibiotic to wait, hello resistance, when are you coming? And uh, and just watching it. So we have to accelerate uh, bacterial evolution. This is why we use genetic engineering and genome engineering of bacterial cells. We use synthetic DNA uh, fragments, which encodes mutations, and we put these DNA fragments into the bacterial cells, where they will create a diverse bacterial genomes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and other mutations or mutation combinations. So in three days, we can create this initial uh, diverse bacterial population. Then we can add our antibiotic of interest. So if we want to find the uh, one and only resistance-free antibiotic, and, uh, uh, and then we can select with it, and the final population will contain just the resistant bacteria. If we found that with one mutation, a uh, high level of resistance could uh, evolve, then we can say that, hello, antibiotic, I don't need you because uh, resistance will uh, make you use less in one year or, or three months. But if, for example, five mutation or mutation combinations were needed, then we can say that, okay, that let's go with the development uh, further, and, uh, and let's see how useful uh, are you? So this is how we can uh, detect uh, resistance mechanisms and the evolutionary pathways using genome engineering to study antibiotic resistance. Uh, the recipe again, use genome engineering, then accelerate the evolution of the resistance in the lab. After that, observe how the resistance evolved and then uh, identify those antibiotics which needs more mutations, which needs more uh, acquire of genetic elements to uh, produce resistance, and find those uh, who are kind of resistance free. And this way we can save a lot of money for the companies and also uh, uh, lives during, uh, due to the fact that we can control antibiotic infections without resistance. So if we perform these experiments in the preclinical phase of, uh, of antibiotic development, we can uh, make sure the companies that no resistance will happen in the first decades of the antibiotic use, so profit will be reached by them, so they have motivation to, uh, to develop new antibiotics, and it is also amazing news for humanity, uh, because then we can use antibiotic, uh, antibiotics for ages, and we won't reach that time where no antibiotics uh, can be used, and we will face ourselves in the Middle Ages, where in a simple pneumonia we can die, and hello, no antibiotics are there because everybody is, resistance, uh, is resistant. So, so this is why it is really important. Um, so what we do in the lab, as a summary, uh, we develop new bacterial genome engineering methods to uh, be able to create uh, in a rapid and high throughput way variants in bacterial populations. We use these technologies to understand better antibiotic, uh, the, develop, the, yeah, the evolution of, uh, of antibiotic resistance, and after, un after creating and understanding it, we can aid uh, antibiotic uh, development and uh, the rational way of uh, creating new molecules and possibly win the war. I would like to thank all the members of our team 
uh, for the help and the enthusiasm we share during the research. And I would like also to thank your attention. <laughs>